So I'm going to take you away from diabetes. I'm going to take you one step ahead of diabetes now. Zargar sahab ne to diabetes ke baare mein bola. Main to aap log aur bada masla deta hoon pre-diabetes. Diabetes ke baati chhodi hai. And my topic is to speak on metformin in pre-diabetes. And this is an emerging new things in diabetes. We will say what's new about metformin, Dr. Mukherjee? Metformin has been there for so long. What's new about use of metformin in pre-diabetes? The outline goes, before I start, just by a show of hands, how many of us in this room use metformin in pre-diabetic patients? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chalo, theek hai. How many of us can define pre-diabetes? Can, sir? Can? Okay. Define? What is pre-diabetes? Which one? It's a continuum. Is it IFG by the ADA criteria, where you should say sugar more than 100 is pre-diabetes? Or would you want to take the IFG WHO data, which says 110 and above is pre-diabetes, not 100 and 203? Or do you want to take the IGT data? 140 to 199 is pre-diabetes? Or do you want to take the HbA1c ADA data, which says 5.7 to 6.4? Or if we had this international expert committee, the last one, which says 6 to 6.4 is pre-diabetes? On the definition, do you want to take IF fasting alone? You want to take fasting and PP? Or you want to take all three? Okay, if you take any three, look at the prevalence. If you take the ADA fasting, 43% people are pre-diabetic. Just go out of indoor, every second person is pre-diabetic, adults. Is it so? Do you believe it? 43% people. If you take the stricter definition of 6% and above, it's only 4%. On the definition of it, tenfold difference in pre-diabetes. We do not know how to define pre-diabetes. As my friend just now said, Abhishek, it's a continuum. Something called dysglycemia. Pre-diabetes is the wrong term. I'll come to it more as we go on. This is Indian data. They have taken IFG and IGT, both, not the others. There was no HbA1c data taken here. Look at how many people in India are pre-diabetic. This goes from, from state to state. On the right-hand side is Chandigarh. And Tripura. Anywhere between 14 to 15%. So one in seven people walking in Chandigarh have pre-diabetes. If you take our northeastern states, we don't see many of them here. Those of you who have been to northeastern states, you see them. They're quite slim, eat well. They're not obese. So there, if you see the pre-diabetes incidence, rather prevalence, it's quite low. It's about 6 to 7%. Pre-diabetes is not a simple condition. We start talking about complications when we talk about diabetes. Please start talking about complications in pre-diabetes. This slide tells you that. First and foremost, we are worried about pre-diabetes because we are concerned about how many people from pre-diabetes will develop diabetes. That's on the left-hand side, as high as 2 to 3 times, hazard ratio. And those simple dots, if you see, there's a triangle, there's a dot, with different color, there's a diamond. Of all the definitions that I've told you, if you take HbA1c of 6 to 6.4, you have the highest risk of progressing diabetes. Again, by a show of hand, how many of us in this room have HbA1c of 6 to 6.4? I'm not I'm if you have an ADA, uh, if you have a, uh, ADA uh, fasting glucose of 125, your risk is not that high. But whatever it is, whichever definition you use, your risk of getting incident diabetes, chronic kidney disease, chronic kidney disease. Zargar sahab to diabetes mein bol rahe the. I'm to pre-diabetes mein bol raha Ek kadam aage leke ja raha Cardiovascular disease. Even in pre-diabetes, you can see the graph. I'm, I don't want to bore you by telling how, how many times it's raised there. All cause mortality, death. You can't hide death. So those of us in this room who have a fasting more than 100 or a PP more than 141, see if you get converted to taking metformin. So is type 2 diabetes inevitable in people who have prediabetes? Answer is no. This is the big debate. This is the Cochrane data. They've used all the definitions as you can see. Fasting, IFG, IFG, 110, 25. All the definitions they've used 
And these are the number of studies. A busy slide. In 15 minutes, I can't take you through all this. Just to tell you, I've done my homework. I've done all this, read all the studies. Maximum data is for five years. If you follow somebody with pre-diabetes, whether he or she develops diabetes over five years, just see the numbers. Anywhere between 30 to 70 percent. Depends from the, in the population that you're studying. Depends on many other factors. But on the right-hand side, if you see those yellow, uh, sorry, the green circles, about one-third will reverse back to normality. So there lies the problem. Kisko de, kisko na de. What are the goals of therapy in pre-diabetes? Very simple. It's the same goals as you would treat somebody with diabetes. So please step back. Please step back. Start intervening early. When you have somebody with pre-diabetes, don't you treat pre-diabetes. Blood, please treat the associated complications. Vizargar sahab said, hypertension, dyslipidemia, NAFL, obesity. What he has said is very, very right. We are, we are going to have an explosion. We already have, we don't have, you are talking about kidney, the cardiologist will not find you. Somebody with chest pain, PCI has to do it. Where is the cardiologist at night? And once this, this pre-diabetes explodes, we will be in trouble. So we have trials to say that yes, we can do something in pre-diabetes. There are a number of trials. How many trials do you need? So many. The four lifestyle trials, the four good lifestyle trials were the Chinese Dachinta study, there was a Finnish DPS, there was American DPP, and there was the Indian DPP. We have this Indian DPP which is quoted very highly in, in, in the literature. And we have so many, you're not supposed to read this slide. It's just to tell you that there are so many trials with pharmacological agents in pre-diabetes. People say, Dr. Mukherjee, there are so many trials you have taught. None of them is licensed for use in pre-diabetes. What's emerging? Emerging is can be used metformin in this group. We are also hesitant. In this, group, in this group, I'm seeing a lot of converts. I'm very happy. I've given this lecture in quite a few places. And there's a lot of hesitancy. I think you're a converted group. I'll show you what the reality is in the world. Little bit about the American DPP, quite an old study, almost two decades now. This is a lot of hard work, which I have done to summarize. There were about 1,000 odd people in the, in the metformin arm and 1,000 odd people in the lifestyle arm. Just look at reduction in incidence of diabetes, the green boxes. It was 31% in the metformin arm and 58% in the lifestyle arm. Number needed to treat for three years. So if you treat, about, if you, if you treat 14 people with pre-diabetes, here pre-diabetes was defined as IGT or IFG ADA criteria. As I told you, the prevalence varies depending on which criteria you're using. So 14 people with pre-diabetes using this criteria, if you give metformin for three years, you will prevent one incident diabetes. If they can do the lifestyle which DPP asked them to do, which I guarantee you, none of us in this room do. I don't see Dr. Janardhan here, he probably does it. Other than that, I don't think any of us do that degree of physical lifestyle modification. If you could do that, seven people, three years, you will prevent one incident, diabetes. It was for three years. Did it continue? Yes, it did continue. They have done the DPPOS study, Diabetes Prevention Program, observational study. This is a good thing about the, 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 the Western people. They follow their patients up. Unfortunately, the Indian I, DPP, I'll show you the data next slide, they didn't follow up for so long. Here they followed the patients up for 10 years and 15 years follow up. And they say that the benefit on the left is lifestyle, 34% and 27%. And on the right, uh, 10 years follow up with metformin is 18%. And uh, with lifestyle, uh, with metformin, even at 15 years, it's at 18% reduction in development of incident diabetes. That's about all. Nobody has looked at prevention of renal, uh, renal dysfunction, cardiovascular de death, uh, all-cause death. Not, none of those have, have been looked in. Too difficult to do so. This then did what you call sub-analysis. And the sub-analysis they found that five groups of people with pre-diabetes benefit more when you give them metformin. So that is the emerging part. This is the emerging, what's emer new in diabetes. This is what's new in diabetes. Age, between the age of 25 to 59, Zargar Saab. So, Kewal Abhay Saab in those chairs are eligible for metformin. If you have a fasting glucose of more than 110, HbA1c of more than 
a lady who has developed GDM, you're duty bound to follow the, patient, the, the lady up because she's got a high risk of developing prediabetes. And if she develops prediabetes, don't even bat an eyelid. Give metformin. Indian DPP program, slight difference if you see. The number of people who develop diabetes, American study, was about 18% over three years. And here, if you see, almost 55% develop diabetes. So Indians with prediabetes will develop incident diabetes about two times more than our Western counterparts. And then, in this study, there was lifestyle modification. There was metformin, and metformin was lifestyle modification. The lifestyle modification was the Indian-style lifestyle modification, not the American lifestyle modification, where they were given exercise bikes, nurses visited, etc. Here, the patients were told, go and exercise, go and walk, go and cycle. They did not have that kind of lifestyle support which the American counterparts had. And here, if you see, the reduction in uh, development of diabetes is almost the same in the three groups. Lifestyle, metformin alone, or metformin plus lifestyle, about 28%. But the number needed to treat is lower. It's about six or seven. What about use of metformin then in people with prediabetes? This is the Cochrane database, Cochrane analysis. I like people who do meta-analysis here. They do all the hard work. You can see the data. <laughs> It's a lot of hard work to put this one slide up, mind you. To do this meta-analysis is not easy. This was probably two people must have worked for a year to get through all this. All the studies on pre-diabetes, which have been put up on the slide for you. If you see, if you are somebody who's interested in, in, in meta-analysis, you will see that two studies, 25% and 21%, which is basically the DPP, DPPOS, and the Indian DPP. They contribute the chunk of the data. But there have been other people who have done smaller studies. And what they found is that if you use metformin in people with diabetes, look at the last line, 0.5, so the 50% reduction of going on to diabetes. So any of you in this room, pre-diabetes, if you think about metformin, I meet so many friends, they keep thinking, Are metformin shuru karu kya jeje? Shuru kar de mere bhai, aur kitna data chahiye tere ko? So this is the debate, to use or not to use metformin. And this debate was published not too long ago, just three years. This is the top journal in diabetes, diabetes care. Two people, Mayor B. Davidson, metformin should not be used. And Dr. Herman and Dr. Ratner said metformin should be used. This was three years ago. Why is there a debate? Because I told you that there is a chance that without intervention, you may go back to normal glycemia. So that's why you have to choose your patients when you're thinking of giving metformin. So which patients would you like to give metformin? Somebody who's got a fasting of 101, HbA1c of 5.7, BMI is 23. Would you think of giving metformin? Probably no. Somebody who's got a fasting of 114, HbA1c is 6.1. But I have crossed the age limit though. The age limit is 25 to 59. You would rather would give metformin, won't you? So when there is no hard data, nobody has followed 100 patients, 100 patients for 15 years with regards to development of renal failure, mortality, and cardiovascular disease, what do you do? You get experts in a hotel like this, nice air condition, give them a lot of food, and what do they do? They come up with consensus statements. So I'm going to show you some consensus statements now. This is diabetes care. I think this is a picture slide. This is what you should be probably following. Metformin therapy should be considered for prevention of type 2 diabetes with individuals who are at high risk, age 25 to 59. This is not cast in stone. If you're 63, you are still eligible, my friend. Individuals with higher fasting glucose, more than 110. HbA1c is 6 or more, of course, less than 6.5 because then you're only diabetic. Certainly women with GDM. If you ever find a lady with GD, past history of GDM, has pre-diabetes, they said, don't bat an eyelid, give metformin. An expert group consensus statement on approach and management of pre-diabetes in India. My talk is in India, no? so I have to give the Indian data. And this is, you can see all the big names. Jojo Sabne, Bola Sabi, hai, Sanjay Kalra Ji, hai, Dr. Ramachandran, hai, Vishnath Mohan Ji. Hai. What do they say? Lifestyle intervention is the key to management of pre-diabetes, 100%. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. Metformin is the only pharmacological agent. I showed you that big busy slide, which has used every drug that you can think of: pioglitazone, metformin, other drugs, which have pre prevented GLP-1 receptor agonists, prevented going progressing from pre-diabetes to diabetes. But of all the drugs, metformin is the only pharmacological agent which is recommended for prevention of postponement of type 2 diabetes. Is it licensed anywhere? The moment you tell somebody that you metformin, denge, I'm lucky I, I work in a little bit of tertiary level hospital, well healed people come with tie and jacket, Dr. Mukherjee is not licensed by FDA. How come you're giving me metformin? You're giving me a drug. I'm not, I don't have a disease. Does anybody, does anybody allow you to use metformin so that you can see na taan ke bol sakte hain, haa boss, isne bola hai, that's why I'm giving it to you. And this is where DCGI comes in. Just read it. We are the only country in the world now which allows metformin in pre-diabetes. And I think rightly so. I've shown you so much data. This was a lot of hard work by some people. And this is not so long ago. It's April 2020, I mean April 2022, just about a year ago. I don't think if you can read it, after detail, just go first paragraph, third paragraph. After detailed deliberation, the committee recommended for grant of approval for the proposed additional indication for metformin. Reduction in the risk or delay of onset of type 2 diabetes in adult overweight patients with IGT and or IFG and or increase HbA1c. Little bit ambiguous. Doesn't tell you which IGT, which IFG, which HbA1c. I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Oh, make it easier for you, I, I made a bigger, bigger printout of that. It, it's, it's the same thing. The approved indication for use of metformin, April 2022, metformin in pre-diabetes, that's the emerging bit. But an old data, really. Reduction in the risk, as I told you, people with IGT, IFG, HbA1c. So what would I do? I would tell you, think of using metformin in five different groups with prediabetes. Age 25 to 59, maybe extend to 65 because I'm getting older. I take metformin, by the way, if you want to know. If your fasting is more than 110, if your HbA1c is 6 to 6.4 percent and you're still a pre-diabetic, and if you were a lady who had GDM and now you have any form of pre-diabetes pre defined by any criteria, five different criteria I told you to define pre-diabetes. As I told you, I, I, I see a converted crowd here. I think almost 40 percent of you raised your hands that you will be using metformin in pre-diabetes. Look at the American data. On the top, there are the two graphs. The blue one is people with BMI more than 35, which is 100% should be on metformin, or a lady with GDM, 47,000 people. Just look the number of people who got metformin. They were all eligible for metformin. Only 4 point, kitna hai? 99, 5%. 1 in 20. All of them should have got metformin, not only to prevent from progressing from pre-diabetes to diabetes, but to reduce anxiety, as he said, na, metformin reduces anxiety as well. And not only that, metformin has got many other good properties, and it's a drug which doesn't have very many side effects, except for some little bit of dyspepsia. If you can't tolerate, that's different. And other groups with pre-diabetes, where metformin would have been helpful, one in 50 are getting pre-diabetes. So I'm very thankful, namaskaram, to this group that you are a converted crowd, you are using metformin, my humble request. Please think of metformin in pre-diabetes, please prevent this huge, humongous load which Jagat Saab told you, already existing in people with pre-diabetes, going to come. We have, you all know that we have doubled the number of, half the, half the number of people with diabetes are not diagnosed, and we have doubled the number of people with pre-diabetes. So hit early, now you metformin is there. Just be careful about vitamin B12, maybe monitor it periodically, that's about it. With that, I'll stop. Thank you.